Hello, and welcome to our Orb Composer tutorial series brought to you by Hexachords. I'm Timothy William, executive producer for Music Factory, and in this episode, we'll be showing you how to create electronic music using Orb Composer version 1.1. This tutorial will assume that you've already set up your DAW template, mapped and loaded all of your VST or instrument sample libraries. If you're not sure how to do this, visit www.orb-composer.com forward slash manuals to download a getting started guide. Today I'd like to show you how to use hardware synthesizers with Orb Composer. Right now you're hearing the track from episode 4 in the background, and if you remember, we used only virtual instruments to create this song. Today we're going to beef up the VST instruments from this track with external analog hardware. So let's load up our sessions and get started. In our last video, episode 4, Making Electronic Music, we used Orb Composer to create an electronic composition using virtual instruments. Today we're going to look at integrating hardware synthesizers into this same track. This can introduce an additional layer of complexity, but I'm here today to show you exactly how to set this up. Pretty soon you'll have Orb Composer sending MIDI data directly to your hardware, which can then be controlled in real time. First, I want to give you a brief overview of the equipment I'll be using today. One synth I'll be using is the Moog Mother 32 semi-modular monophonic synthesizer. This is a staple in the majority of my recordings, and I often prefer this unit on bass duty. I'll also be using the Korg Volca Keys 3-voice polyphonic analog synthesizer. We should be able to program some pretty nice sounding plugs on this compact and inexpensive synth. On to one of my favorites, the Korg MicroKorg 4-voice polyphonic digital synthesizer. This world-renowned and lovable synth has been labeled as one of the most popular synthesizers of all time, and it's really easy to see why. And finally, we have the legendary Dave Smith Instruments Tetra 4-voice polyphonic analog synthesizer. I typically prefer this one on leads and pads. Also note that for this setup, you will need some kind of MIDI routing device. There's a few options out there, but the one I'm currently using is the Motu MIDI Express 128. I've already set up physical two-way MIDI communication between all of my devices and DAW. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and duplicate the existing MIDI tracks here and disconnect them from their virtual instruments. I've already done this in a new folder called Orb Composer Analog here. And these are just carbon copies of the tracks above. The only difference is the MIDI out is not assigned to anything. And just on a quick side note, our Cubase input transformer filters are still functioning on these tracks from our previous session. Now I've set up this new folder for two different reasons. The first is to keep things relatively simple and easy to navigate. The second reason is that we may want to blend back in some of those VST sounds from above, so I've kind of made it a habit to just keep that option open for myself. And that being said, we'll keep those VST tracks completely muted until we land on some actual synth patches, record them in, and really start to finalize the track. So our first goal is to set up the MIDI and audio routing to make sure that MIDI data is being sent from Orb Composer directly through DAW to your synthesizers and then back into DAW. This will capture the MIDI data as well as the audio data in one take. And I know that sounds a bit confusing, but let's break it down just a little bit further. Our goal today is to have Orb Composer send MIDI data to DAW where it will be captured while simultaneously pushing that MIDI data to your hardware synthesizers. This audio will be recorded back into DAW onto dedicated audio tracks which correspond to the recorded MIDI tracks. Not only will you hear what the synthesizers are playing in real time, you'll also be capturing both the MIDI data and the audio in one take. This allows for full flexibility on your recording or performance. It also gives you the ability to use or change existing MIDI data to do multi-pass recordings until you get exactly what you need. Now what I need to do first is assign the orb parts to my synthesizers. So I'm assigning lead 1 as the microcorg, synth 1 as the Volca keys, 
pad 1 as the DSi Tetra, and base Electra 1 as the Moog. Now that we've pointed each of our four new Orb MIDI tracks correctly to their appropriate hardware, we also need to create audio tracks so we can hear what's coming back into DAW. So I've already created mono or stereo tracks accordingly, depending on my device, and placed them directly under each corresponding MIDI track. Now that we have all of our routing set up, let's go ahead and get Orb Composer ready. So what I want to do now is load the same exact project I used for the final song from episode 4. I'll probably need to change instrument settings within Orb itself, uh, most importantly register so my bass isn't playing at C4 for example if I don't want it to, as well as polyphony to make sure that I'm utilizing as many or as few voices I want on each of my synths. Make sure to go ahead and save this as a newly named Orb Composer project, just in case you have to recall the original. Now you have a couple different ways you can begin. For me, I typically spend a lot of time messing around with the different patches on each one of my synthesizers until I really find the right sound for each. And once I've decided on the basic patches my synths will be playing, it's time to start dialing on our new settings within Orb Composer. I recommend doing this on a per block basis, starting with range. I'll start out by soloing our first instrument and checking for range, notes, and any issues throughout the whole track, and repeat this process for the remaining or blocks. So I just want to mention, there's no real exact science to this part of the process. Um, I found it's really more trial and error. Um, luckily, in today's case, the patches I've selected translate fairly well. And that being said, it never hurts to double check. Now we're going to do the same exact process from before to get this MIDI data into DAW and get our instruments performing. Let's do a quick pre-flight check, making sure our orb locators are set, our MIDI and audio tracks are armed, and we are ready to record. And then let's go ahead and record in the data.
All right, the MIDI data is in, and we already have a great idea of how that sounds through our hardware. The audio has also been recorded, but I highly recommend going back and tweaking the MIDI data and re-recording each synth independently for more control. Now, same as before, we don't want to quantize here. What I want to do is like a control A, select all, make sure snap is on and just move it right to the beginning. And go ahead and double check that. Now I just want to mute my MIDI tracks here to make sure we're not resending data. I've already reactivated our VST percussion line, so let's see what that sounds like. So that's great. Now I can tweak this MIDI data as needed, send it back out, re-record parts, really whatever I need to do. In this project's case, it's time to blend back in the VST instruments and get this track ready for production. Let's go ahead and unmute the VSTs from the previous session and have a quick listen to everything together. And then just as before, I want to go ahead and make sure I do a final save in Orb Composer here. Once again, this is Timothy William, and thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions or requests for specific tutorials, let us know in the comments below. I'll also include a link to the fully produced copy of this track in the comments. Hopefully you found this video helpful. 
To get your copy of Orb Composer software, visit www.orb-composer.com. Here you can download your free, fully functioning demo or purchase the artist or pro versions of our software.